What up, you cool motherfucker? What's up, bitch? Always asking me fucking complicated the questions. 18th. The 18th. March 18th. Sunday. Uh, instead of getting all serious and um, fucking political and all that shit this week, we're going to talk about some just... Keep it light. Some... Just some talk, man. Just do our thing. Uh, yeah. I don't normally comb my hair except for fucking funerals or weddings. But you look good. But they're both bad, uh, bad occasions. But did you dye it? I dyed my beard, man. I haven't done the hair yet. <laughs> but uh, I don't see no gray in the hair. Maybe on the sides, huh? Believe, yeah, believe it or not, we got some fucking subscribers from Minnesota, and one of their comments was they wanted to see. See some hair in action. Yeah, well, you ain't got no hair over yeah, here, so, so it's all on that side. I'm just giving them a little props at the start of this bitch to tell you guys I love you. I appreciate you guys coming in and watching us. And uh, he's the good looking one. He's the yeah. one who I'm tuning into. <laughs> he's the pretty boy. We've had a lot of hype on it, but there, there's my hair. It's there. I can't rock like that, so I'm gonna fucking take it off right now. <laughs> you gotta carry it for a few seconds. But... You gotta be comfortable. You gotta be comfortable, Fraser. Yeah, I wanna have a good day, man. Ooh, 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 you just got like. Start off with, bro. Uh, whatever you want. Um, how about driving, dude? I want to do uh, driving. People know how to fucking drive. We can start straight, there. Straight up, man. Fucking, I do the same route to work and back home every day. I'm sure a lot of you commuters or a lot of you people do the same shit. And occasionally you notice the same fucking trucks or the same car, you mm, know, yep. on the on the way to, to work. And there's certain people that just don't know how to fucking merge, man. And you've been we've been driving almost 30 years. I know how to merge. I know how to fucking get on the freeway. But these retards fucking start backups, man. And I've been retarded myself. I mean, everybody's been, you know, that way when you're driving. Semi retarded, yeah. But even with these stoplights, I don't know how they do it where you live, but we, over here we have these stoplights to get on the freeway. They have a freaking stoplight, right? You seen that? Yeah. No. They have them all over. I drive to the Bay every day, so we got them all over the place. You do that fast track shit? Yep. Yeah, my company got me a fast track, which is nice, especially for the bridges because the fucking bridges back up. But go ahead. Go about the merge thing because people don't know how to fucking drive. Dude, all I'm saying is when you're going to merge and get on the freeway, somebody should have told you this at some point in time. You need to be going the same speed as traffic because if you're not and you get up, get right there and you stop or you, you hesitate, it's causing that backup. It's causing people to get back, man. Yeah, people don't know how to drive in, in all facets. People people will ride your – you know, every 10 miles an hour, you're supposed to have a car length between you and the car in front of you. So if you're going 60 miles an hour, you should have six car lengths because if that car slams on its brakes for no fucking reason, absolutely no reason – and you hit it, it's still your fault if you hit it because yeah. you should have had space enough to stop. No, you know what they fucking do too is you leave that bumper, you leave that space, and then these retards are fucking retards. Oh, they're like, hey, I get right up in there. No, flip people off. I don't like, sit there and go, wow, this fucking guy, look at this fucking it's It's too much energy to, to waste being pissed off. I just slow back down. I wave people in. Yeah, you know, well, come on, give them that physical signal. Hey, come on. First of all, wherever I go, I have plenty of time to get there. I leave early to whatever yep. I do. So I get in, get in, get in. I can't stand these people who are racing to work at the last minute. And then they're pissed off at you because you're just driving normal like you're supposed to drive. I drive the uh, the river road, the back road. So it's one 160. Lane goes, 160, right? It'll be foggy. You can't see nothing. And cars will still try to pass me around the corners. It's insane. It's like, well, then get, lane up, road. get up 10 minutes earlier and you don't have to pass me. No, man. Uh I've gotten in the habit of telling my old lady, like, say we got to be somewhere at 10 o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. 10 o'clock in the morning. So what I do is I tell her, babe, we got to be there at 930, <laughs> right? So I got that 30-minute 30, 30 window, and in her mind, she's like, oh, well, I don't have to be ready till 10 Yeah. because she's already got that down, you know? But if it takes you 35 minutes to get there, it takes you an hour. Figure an hour. I, I do at least 15 minutes early because if you're 15 minutes early, ain't nobody ever going to tell you, hey – Oh, Fraser showed up 15 minutes early. 
No. You're never getting mad at you for that. You're two minutes late. You're fucking late. You're not racing to get there on time. Plus, if you if you're getting places on late, you're you you don't respect other people's time either. You're you're more worried about your own thing. Like it doesn't take any more energy to leave ten minutes early as it does ten minutes late. It takes the same amount of energy. No oh, man, it, uh, the stress, the fucking like you said. My lady gets super pissed. She gets that road road rage shit, man. Sarah does too. My she, lady does too. She came home one night. She's like, right there by the Walmart, there's a little merge action where you're either going to turn right into Walmart or you're going to keep going straight down Twin Cities there. And this guy kind of cuts her off. Oh, she's fucking pissed, you know? <laughs> and she ends up pulling into the CVS parking lot with this guy. The guy gets out, starts yelling at her and shit, and she's talking shit, and she's like, well, why don't you follow me home and see how much of a man you are if you want to Oh, you know? getting you in trouble. Dude, yeah. So <laughs> what am I going to do, dude? She shows up with some guy in, out in front of the house. Yeah, he's driving bad. What the fuck am I going to do? Yeah, man? yeah, exactly. We were, <laughs> we were in Old Sack, and, and there's a lower parking lot right there. And so she comes down the wrong way, comes in the parking lot. The guy's trying to get out, and there we're face-to-face. -face. She's driving. I'm in the passenger seat. And when she always tells me, then you fucking drive then. So – and then she's <laughs> – She's flipping off the guy. She's like, fuck you, asshole. I'm like, what are you doing? You're going to get your ass kicked. <laughs> she's the one driving the wrong way. Yeah. And she's mad at, mad at them. Uh, Fucking asshole. Hey. Holy <laughs> shit. You're going to get me. You're going to get both of us beat up. You know, and, and I know I'm faster than you because I can run way faster than her. Yeah. You know, I'm getting away. You know, <laughs> poor thing. No, nah, I just, uh, I don't know why they don't fucking have a refresher course. Or put it out as a public statement on TV. I you know? don't think it matters. This is how you fucking merge, right? It don't matter. It doesn't matter. Bad drivers are bad drivers. They ain't gonna change. Just it. idiots, man. They just always try. Like, fuck, I, I the 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 worst is riding somebody's bumper. My daughter got a ticket for riding too close to somebody's bumper. Now you have to be bad to get a ticket for that because cops don't usually give you tickets yeah, for that. You gotta be hella close. Yeah, she's like, oh, I know you told me. It's like, well. Fuck, then do it. You know what it is? Until you get into a wreck, you don't have that fucking knowledge in your head. How bad the wreck is. What's going to happen afterwards with your it's insurance? It's like getting punched in the face. You have yeah. a little bit more respect for people once you get punched in the face. Yeah. After you get punched in the face, you're a little standoffish. Yeah. But until you get punched in the face, that's why women are so brave all the time. They're oh. always talking shit because they've never been punched in the face. Not that you should punch a woman in the face, but you're so brave. Until you get punched in the face, then you're like, okay, I'll be a little cautious because, you know, it don't feel good. I got a real good story about that, man. I used to hang around with these uh, Filipino cats. Uh, one of my neighbors. Salamanapo. 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 What the fuck was that? Uh, yeah, hey, listen, man. Listen. Shit, you can say anything. Hey, I would believe you. I, was like, uh, I said, like, you are my friend and I love you and your pussy stinks. <laughs> that, makes, that makes sense. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> this cat, uh, He's a big Filipino guy, man. He's like 6'1", 6'2", which is big for a Filipino dude. Oh, and he's yeah. rolling like 230 or so, you know? So I hooked him up uh, with one of my bros. They were going to – um, I don't know if I should say that. Yeah, I should, probably shouldn't say that. They were doing some uh, illegal activities, we'll say. Okay. That You want to say uh, what they were doing? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, they were doing illegal activities, man. Like, <laughs> okay, go ahead. Drugs were involved. There we go. Drugs right. were involved. But – um. This dude's a normal white guy, a little, little smaller. He's probably like, I don't know, 5'8", five, 5'9", five, something like that. And this uh, Filipino guy beefs up on him. And the white dude's like, dude, fucking, we don't play like that. You know what I mean? We don't we don't play like that. You may be used to doing that shit around the other Filipino guys who ain't going to step up against you. But this guy's a wrestler and shit. Fucking put the smack down on this guy. And he went from fucking being super buster badass, you know, to the next time when I seen him, he was really cool. Really mild manner. <laughs> his whole attitude about life and everything changed once he got, got his ass he kicked. He got dude. checked. Yeah, once he got his ass kicked. And from then on, that motherfucker is one of the coolest guys I know, but he really needed to get his ass kicked before he was fucking a cool guy, you know? Yeah, I was listening to this other podcast, and they were talking, this, the one big, huge black dude, he was like, um, the cop pulled him over, and he had a knife. And he goes, well, why do you got a knife? He goes, look at me. I'm 6'6". Six, six. I'm a huge guy. If somebody steps to me, they're going to have a gun because nobody's going to step to me. Yeah. He goes, so I need to defend myself against a gun because no one's just going to randomly step up to me because they know they're going to get their ass kicked. And the cop goes, you know what? You're right. He gave him back his knife. 
He goes, I got to have something to defend myself, you know? Um, yeah, there's too many want to be tough guys. He says, I'm not a tough guy. I understand that. But people, everybody thinks they're a tough guy. I mean, it, especially when you get to a certain age, you're like, fucking move on from this, dude. Dude, we see it now because we're in the 40s club, man. So fucking, I don't go under the bar to get ass. I don't go in the bar to fucking get in a fight. Enjoy go, yourself. No, I go to the bar to have a good time. Yeah. Maybe watch a game, bullshit with some friends or stuff. But I do have some really big friends, and I've seen it with my big friends. And uh, Triple D, Dirty Diesel Dan, you know who I'm talking? He, uh, I've seen him knock two people out. Fucking, just fucking knock them out. And all we were doing the one time, we just came in there, got a beer at the Sporty in Elk Grove. Texas A&M had just won the national championship when um, I think it was Vince Young was a quarterback. Okay. And there's one cat in there with a Texas A&M hat on. We're in fucking El Grove, dude. There ain't no way you fucking follow Texas AM. He's a front runner, no. talking mad shit. Okay. And for some reason, when these guys want to fight, these little drunk bastards, they come up and try to find the biggest guy to fight. Why is that? I have no idea, dude. <laughs> but fucking uh Diesel Dan, he uh he basically shoved him off a couple times. Mind you, we only we're on our first beer. We don't even have that liquid courage to fucking, you know, want to fight or whatever. Because after three or four beers, fucking, I could be gilded into a fucking fight, you know. <laughs> but this fucking bastard comes up. They're face to face. He gets ready to cock back like this. And all of a sudden, I'm <laughs> down there talking shit like this. Bah, 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 bah. They say, I know, for me, after Dan, it's, that's when I broke my arm that yeah. night, dude. Right. It's a bad scenario. But that fucking liquid courage... For some reason, it, it's always like DG. Whenever we go out with DG, if if anybody is is instigated to a fight, it's always D the guy Danny, the guy yeah. who's willing to fight. Yeah. It's like I'm gonna pick him. Up. Somebody always has to say something sarcastic to him, disrespectful. It's like, why him? Out of all of us sitting around, why him? Dude. He's the one guy who will fight you. Well, DG's got the death stare too, man. He I've does, seen it, man. He'll fucking give you the death uh -huh. stare, and you fucking know, oh shit's <laughs> on, dude. So I mean. Big big guys got to be on the fucking lookout like that, you know? Yeah. I don't think guys roll into the bar and they're like, oh, I'm going to fight that fucking guy right there. Yeah, that little dude over there. Yeah. Like, For what? No. It, it, just, it happens. I've seen it uh, another time. <laughs> this fucking one. We're at the bowling alley and uh, we're just having a couple beers before we go bowling. And there's these two chicks that bowl with us, and they're from Food for Less. So we start talking about Food for Less. I don't know about you, but when we used to go to Food for Less, as a kid, that was the fucking – it was I was hyped for me. Because you snacked on all the food. because I was going to get some bag of cinnamon bears or some fucking – You're little, eating while you're shopping. Yeah. So, you know, it was badass. Dude. I don't know it was probably a low-income thing or whatever, but most people been to Food for Less. But anyways, talking to these chicks, and this old-timer, like in the 60s, comes up, starts grabbing on these girls' asses. Huh? He's grabbing on these girls' asses while we're at the bar, and they're like, hey, please, leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> Randomly old. grabbing people's asses. Really old. He was a really cool old black dude. Uh, his name was uh, Grady or Grade, something like Grady. that. Grady? Yeah. From San Francisco? Yeah, something like that. But uh, he's at, he's been at the bowling alley like 30 years, so everybody fucking knows him. But he's a perv, and he's up grabbing ass and shit. Okay. So Dan tells him, hey, please, man, just fucking – Leave these ladies alone. They don't appreciate the tension, this and that, right? I'm sitting on the other side. I see this old man fucking like slow motion like this. And I'm looking. I'm like, Dan, he's going to hit you. <laughs> and he's, Dan looks at me like, is he going to hit me? He said, yeah. Fucking old man fucking hits him. Diesel Dan was like fucking 6'4", dude. He, I mean, he's a big dude. He gets up. He hits the old man, dude. Like three times before the old man hit the ground. Again, we get kicked out and shit like that. And, you know, he's trying to fucking protect these, yeah. these ladies' uh, yeah. pride. I don't know if it's protecting their pride, but just protecting them, you know, man. Some people cross the line like that. Oh, yeah. We at work one day, this is a true story. We're, we're sitting there and we're, we're about to take a break and we're going to take lunch. We're sitting out front and two uh, uh, lunch trucks pull up one Asian lady and one Asian dude. 
Now, now, if you work on job sites or you work where they have lunch trucks, they're always competing to get that because you can make thousands of dollars every day. I mean, they make a ton of money because everybody there'll be two, yeah. three hundred people on a job site. So these this this old this Asian lady and the Asian dude pull up on the truck, right? They get out and they start arguing with each other. We're sitting there eating lunch or watching them. They're yelling at each other. They can't be more than you know three foot five, and they're sitting there screaming at each other. And the guy says, the Asian dude said, you know, get the fuck out of here. And she says, fuck you. She puts her finger in his face. Fuck you. He just goes back, cocks her, get in there, and they drive off. The police come and everything. We say, well, we don't know. We don't know what happened. Whatever. But, uh, yeah, people have balls, dude. Dude, you that know. And, you know, getting back to that road rage shit, man. You remember that shit in Rancho Cordova where this dude, there was road rage, and dude got out and was fucking like, pop, 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 pop. That's crazy. Dude. He shot this cat over road rage. It's retarded. His fucking son was in the car. God, that was crazy, dude. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that that's how far people take it. You know? Oh, they do. I, I a guy I work with, big dude, and he was... I pulled him over. I said, pull over. And it was like, it's just going back to that thing. They always pick the wrong person. This guy, Donnie, he passed away. But I mean, big guy. He pulls over and the guy's fucking sitting in the car and he's talking shit sitting in the car. Donnie goes <laughs> right through the window. Boom. Knocks him out. He's all, the kids are in the backseat crying and screaming. He just looks, he don't know what to do. He gets back in his car and he leaves. But uh, it's just, just ignore it. Keep going. Because you don't know how to fucking drive. Just keep going. I don't know. But part of the hurry and shit, all of it starts with the freeway. Because if you get from, like, Mac Road to the G, right, you only got, like, uh, Sheldon, Elk Road Boulevard. Oh, this is the worst. Yeah. But going right here, when you, once you hit two lanes and people have no options, right, the traffic flow is cool. It's when you give people options and you got, like, five lanes. That they start fucking around. Oh, I can get around him. I can get right there. People right in this area do not know how to drive. I'm telling no. you, I drove in the Bay Area for over 20 years. It's easier to drive with that crazy traffic with all those people in the Bay Area than it is down here. People down here in the Valley do not know how to fucking drive at all. And then if you throw some crazy like rain, like water. And they're still driving <laughs> the same speed. <laughs> yeah, but they don't know. They're like, oh, fuck, what is that? But but and you have to be cautious. You can't just keep driving at eighty miles an hour if it's raining. No, you know, or, throttle or, back or fucking fog, man. Yeah, fog's the worst. Fog's yeah, a bitch my, around I here, dude. Time. You know, because the river road got fucking fog all the time, dude. I mean, sometimes you can't see. Literally, you cannot see like fucking fifty feet. I, I was gonna say like tw yeah, fifteen or twenty feet. Yeah, even, you man. Can't I see mean, it's running. fucking thick. And people are still going as fast as they can, passing me, going around, honking, flipping me off. <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with you? We got one cat at work. Uh, I showed up and I was late, man. I still gave myself the 15 minutes to get a, get there early, right? Mm -hmm. But I was late by like eight minutes or something. And he started busting my nuts. And I'm like, dude, I've been here fucking 25 years. I'm not a fucking show up late kind of guy. I'm always here early enough to fucking shit, sit and chop it up and shit with the other guys. But he's busting my balls. And I said, man, I live in Galt. You fucking know what it's like when it gets foggy over here? I didn't know I was. It was gonna wake up and be fucking foggy that day. Rather be late, be late, and be alive. <laughs> but you know, this is true. I've been driving to the Bay Area for twenty plus years. I've been. I commuted to San Jose. I've been late to work two times in my whole life. See, and I've been driving two and a half, three hours commuting. Yeah, it, it fucking you got the time thing down. But when Mother Nature says, "Hey, you're fucked today," I'm not gonna drive fifty five no. or sixty on the freeway when I can't see fucking Wait. fifty feet. In front be of me. late. You're alive. Be late. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. You ain't going to lose your fucking job unless it's, you know, it's a habit. You know, that's what gets me, though. You show up fucking early, 15, 20 minutes early for your job for fucking 20 years, right? All that matters is what you did yesterday. Hey, you show up late one time, eight minutes or whatever. You're a piece They're of like, shit. Fucking, ah, piece of shit. Fucking yeah. eight minutes. Fuck, late. You don't even give a fuck about his job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it only matters what you did lately. That's yeah. all that matters. It doesn't matter what you did in the past. I completely understand it, man. Yeah. What's up? Are you fucking good on the driving then? No, I'm not good on the driving. Driving's fucking retarded, but yeah, I'm good, done talking about it. Yeah, so you fucking retarded drivers out there, you know who you are because we've all been. Just fucking take your time. Leave some space, right? I don't care where you live. People in Minnesota, I'm sure you got fucking way worse stories than us with that fucking They're going to laugh and about shit. this, and they're yeah. going to say, okay, and they're going to drive the same way Monday yeah. morning. Nobody cares. You know what, though? <laughs> Sincerely, man, I, drive, I got a fucking ticket. Probably about eight years ago for a stop sign deal, right? So after that, I was like, fuck it. I'm not getting one of these ever again. 
Five hundred bucks hurts me, dude. It's uh, not gonna end my life, but it fucking hurts me. Yeah, I ain't fucking got no tickets on my record. Fuck that. And the same thing with speeding. I ain't driving fast. Yeah, well, I'm you learned your lesson. It. Remember when you were driving fast in the satellite? <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking legit. Which time? <laughs> yeah, which time? <laughs> yeah, that fucking that was a good story though, man. Yeah, we'll get into satellite story sometime. So I'm gonna close out the fucking uh, driving with one with this one right here. Driving Miss Daisy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So what else do we got up there? I don't know. You want to roll on abortion, dude? Yeah, that's a tough t- a topic because no matter what you say, you're going to piss somebody off. I don't care, dude. You know, I am who I am. So oh, yeah. Gonna... You feel how you feel. I mean, that's your opinion. You feel how you feel. My opinion is I don't agree with abortion. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't support abortion, but it's not my choice. That's a, that's a female's choice. I believe in women has a right to choose, and it's up to them, and they have to live with the consequences. It's not for me to decide. I'm a guy. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't have to make that decision. I don't know, man, because I think it's on both of you. I mean, you're both having sex, right? Well, I think you should have that conversation, but ultimately, it's her decision. You can't tell her what she's going to do with her body, but you can have that conversation and say, you know what? I really, I think we should try to keep it, you know? It, in in most cases, and like if it said, if the doctor said, you know, you might lose your life if this if you continue with this uh, pregnancy, then that's a decision the woman has to make by herself. Let me let me throw a couple of things out to you that I think fucking makes abortion the way it is. Right, a lot of people use abortion for birth control. It's a form of birth control I think for them. There is all right people who do that. Yeah. Another reason they use it so frequently because there are people with multiple abortions, even multiple abortions in the same year. Right, they had an abortion three months ago, and they're in the clinic again having another abortion, dude, because it's fucking free, right? True, true, but that doesn't that doesn't like I can't control that. And at the end of the day, they between their them and their higher power or whoever they have to do, they have to live with that. That's not my decision. To well, live with. a big part of it is because they have no spiritual guide in their life, man. They are godless, you know. I think so. Because if you have God in your heart, you're not gonna fucking. I have issues fucking killing the snails, killing bugs. My kids make fun of me all the time because, you know, especially my girl's spider in the sink or whatever. I, I agree. I'm the same way. I fucking go way. get a, a little napkin. I put the spider outside. I'm like, dude, I gave you a chance. You know what I mean? It's a living creature. You know, that's what I feel. I don't know. As I get older, dude, I just don't want to kill shit. You I know? Hear, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't agree with abortion, but I don't. it's not my decision to make ultimately at the end of the day. Now, if you're a couple and you guys talk about it and the doctor comes and says, I mean, what if the doctor comes and says, hey, your wife's part might lose her life during this. I mean, that's a decision she's going to ultimately have to finally make. I mean, you guys can talk about it and say, hey, we're going to go through with it. Let let it in God's hands. And, but then if she says, I don't I don't want to die, and I don't know, it's, I can't say, no, you need to to go through with this pregnancy. It's, that's not for me to say. I'll just say, well, that's your decision. And whatever you do, I support it. Now, when you get together with somebody, you're married somebody, or you're in a relationship with somebody, I think if you're get you know, to a, to a point where you guys pretty much see eye to eye on a lot of issues. So I think like me and my wife, we, we agree on a lot of issues. We don't agree on abortion, but she does agree that it's a woman's choice. And then was, at the end of the day, I would just leave it up to her and see, uh, and, and I don't think we would have one. I think one of the issues is though, these aren't couples having abortion. No, I know. I know what you're saying. I'm you know what I'm saying? saying? Yeah, a yeah. lot of times it's a single girl. year old kid and they didn't use protection and now she's pregnant and they use it as a form of abortion bro so here's what here's what i think would fix the abortion issue right first of all make people pay for it you know if it'll cost 2500 bucks or whatever to have an abortion you're pro- you're 15 16 years old you're probably not gonna have an abortion first of all because you can't afford it right and then if you do want to have an abortion to come up with that money, you're going to have to go to your parents or you're going to have to go to friends or it's going to be somebody else besides yourself rolling into that clinic and making this choice. And then once you get parents involved, once you get your friends involved and shit like that, like I'm sure they talk to their other 15, 16 year old friends or I'm sure there's 19, 20 year old girls that go through this at college, too. Maybe they weren't uh, promiscuous during high school, but now that they're in college. You know, they got a different set of rules or standards and they're out to get some, you know, but you put that monetary thing in place where it costs money to do this 
it's going to curb the abortion thing right off the bat. M money is one of them right off well, the bat. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you're well off and your daughter gets pregnant, and you know that you know people with money, they'll probably go and pay for it. You know, it's I I, I don't think I don't know if it, you can economically um, kind of pick people out. I'm not sure. I mean, I mean, true story. True story. Uh, um, hopefully. My wife don't get mad at me. <laughs> but, I mean, she was pregnant when she, she like, 15 years old, I'm going to say. And um, first time ever having sex. First time got pregnant. And you know yeah. what? She decided, regardless or not, what the guy was going to have involvement, she was going to have this baby. Yeah. And and to her credit. God bless you. She had the kid. She took care of the kid. Um, she got her own place. She had friends, family watch uh, my daughter. Um, that, you know, wasn't, it's not biologically my daughter, but it's my daughter. Cause I raised her. She was little. She had family friends watch her while she went to work. You know, she got into a low income apartment that she qualified for, which is those, those programs are made for people like that. Yeah. She didn't try to, to stay on government assistance. She didn't have another kid till we had a kid, you know, she did what she was supposed to do and she had the kid took care of it. She's a great kid now. Um, and she, when she was real little, she did it on her own with her family's help. Um, it's tough, I, man. I think that's inspirational that, that you, you can do it if you want to, you know, and, and unfortunately, man, those stories aren't the ones you see in the fucking news. You don't see these stories where, yeah, this guy ain't going from rags to riches being a millionaire, but here she is. She's taking that life, taking a uh, responsibility for it. Yeah. Raising it, turning into another loving, caring human individual, right? That, that kind of stuff's not popularized out there. It's not put out there. No. Those kind of and, then, and now look at our daughter. Yeah. Man, she's uh, playing college basketball. She's going to graduate from college. She's going to get accounting degree. I mean, she, we we put it, and she did. She she birthed this person, but we raised her, put a, a positive person into this world, into yeah. our in, in our society. That's going to be a, a betterment to our society. Um, but Mexico to Texas to have an abortion. Right, okay, because she didn't want to do it fucking with a spoon in an alley in Mexico, so she came across here, used the Planned Parenthood shit, right? And Supreme. And then different things or are breast are, augmentation, yeah, and those it's cheaper jobs. down there, yeah. yeah. But in this case, what I'm saying, or what I would suggest is, okay, we'll kick that cost of the first abortion but you're going to give up your rights of being a parent because then there is some uh thinking that has to go on with this responsibility hey i'm having sex unprotected sex you know and here's the consequence i'm going to have a kid now and if i'm not going to have this kid i choose to kill it i choose to have an abortion because to me that baby even though it's a fetus it's still alive to me it's still a person it has a soul that's undetermined. I don't know. I believe so. That's what I'm just saying. Two guys discussing what what should a woman do with their body. That's 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 a tough one. People are going to be looking at it like, who the fuck are you guys? Yeah, but we should we have just an amount of right to talk about it as anyone else. Oh yeah, that, that's what we're doing. I mean, talking about it. But if there's consequences to it, if there's no consequences to it, they're going to people are going to continue to use it as. Well, there's consequences um, to it. I believe there's consequences. And you know, it depends on, on what do you believe your higher power is. Yeah, but th that's the thing. I'm not trying to tell a woman what she can or can't do. What I'm trying to do is put a voice out there for those unborn children, those children that are getting murdered and killed every single year, right? Because here's a great example. Your daughter, right? If she had been killed, we'd be missing that piece in, in here in, in our lives. I'm telling you, know? you, I agree. I agree with you. I just, it's not my decision. To make. But, but the. The consequence part could be our decision to make, man, because there currently there is none. You know, we went to school with a girl that everybody knows she had multiple, multiple abortions, man. Who's that? I'm not going to say her name, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean. Now you got to be down. curious because I don't want to know. You have to write it down. I want to know now. Now I'm curious. because <laughs> I'm trying to come up with a code name. But... Uh, were you involved in this? Was this no. one of yours? No. No, not that one. Not, not that one. <laughs> I did. She's a little older than us. <laughs> well, that never stopped you before. Yeah, right? I, I know, right? Well, uh, friends, aunts, and <laughs> cousins, whatever. Yeah. Uh, funny shit. Well, 
you know, I, we could go on and on about this topic and, you know, we never come to. A real... Well, let me ask you, what would be, uh, what do you think you have for consequences or you have as some rules to fucking, because uh, I think you should keep abortion legal. I do. Incest. Like a guy's banging his daughter and they has a baby. I think that's wrong. Or cousin, aunt, uncle, grandpa, yeah. whatever. You know, uh, base. Base was a product of incest, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a little alien, huh? Well, his grandpa is his dad. That's what I heard. That, that's what happened, man. That's terrible. But fucking, and you can tell, man, it took some physical uh, toll on his body. It did, but. What about that? If abortion, like if you're going to have a baby um, and you find out they're Down syndrome or they have LS or some shit, you know? It depends how you look at it, man. Maybe that you look at it like that kid's special and then and he comes into this world and inspires other people. Like, you know, I don't think – I think everybody brings something into this world. If that kid has Down syndrome and, and maybe you bring him around people – and that inspires other people. Maybe he was meant to be born that way to inspire other people. I right. don't. I like don't. the Gerber baby this year is the Down syndrome baby. I first seen that. time. Yeah. Yep. I seen that. But I don't know, man. Everybody's got their own decisions on it, you know. Yeah. Pushing forty-four next month, bro. And I talked to my old lady. You know, she's gonna be thirty-eight this year, and it'd be just our fucking luck that. DJ, <laughs> <laughs> no, I got I got cut when I was like uh, twenty six or twenty seven because uh, I had to take on my brother and my sister. So oh, so you're fixed. Yeah, because I I we had two K kids, Kayla and KJ, oh, and then okay. my mom needed me to take care of my kids because she, she was. I work with the guy though who was fifty years old. He was fixed. He got divorced from his wife. His kids are in college, grown. He got a girlfriend that's 38. She got pregnant because his shit grew back together. Dude, you know? it does. The doctor told me the same shit. Yeah. Ten, ten years, you're supposed to go back in and fucking. Yeah, he has a two-year-old kid. Yeah. You know? Hey, this other guy uh, I work with, same kind of shit. He had his shit fixed, got a girlfriend, fucking. He's like, it's not mine because I got fixed. She's like, oh, it's yours. He's like, no, it's not. I want to test. I want to make sure. And they're in love. They're, 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 yeah, they're cool. Couple. They're a couple. But as soon as he asked for a test... She's like, fuck you, you don't trust me, this and that, yada, yada. And then the next thing you know, they're fighting. So she goes and gets a test. It's his. <laughs> now she don't want fucking nothing to do with him. <laughs> now he's got a fucking $1,800 to $100 a month fucking child support payment, dude. You know what I mean? Fuck. I don't know. Because I would. I mean, Michelle Michelle knows, too. If, if we have a baby, I'm going to say, yeah, that better be my shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not, I'm going to find out, man. Yeah, that's a tough one. You know, that's, that's another way to go about it, but. I think fucking honestly, man, if the price of abortion that would that would curb some deaths. And I think the consequences of giving up your right to have more children. Because here you are, your first time you're gonna be in a parent. I, I right? see what you're saying about the cost, but then you're pricing you you're you're what's it called? You're pricing people out. You're 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 <sighs> so what happens when you can't afford something, man? Yeah, but the, then the only people who are gonna get it are the people who have money. No, but you know, I know as well as like you're saying it's, about five hundred dollars. It's a, then become an economic thing. A five hundred dollar yeah. traffic ticket, right? That that puts a little hurt on me. But if twenty five hundred bucks came up, I'm gonna have to fucking put some money together or dip into some savings or something. I mean, we're in the ability we can come up with that. But if you're fifteen, sixteen, you got a twenty five hundred dollar bill all of a sudden on your plate. That's what I'm saying. It's it's depends okay. on on how wealthy your parents are because your parents are probably going to want to pay for it. Or maybe the boy. That's involved. Maybe he needs to kick in, and they need to fucking you know handle this. Or if not, fucking, I don't. I don't know. I just don't like the way it's going now, where they use abortion as a fucking means of birth control. Yeah, well, that goes back to parenting, and everything yeah. stems to parenting. Everything in this world uh, goes back to parenting. Whether it's terrorism, whether it's mass shootings, whether it's abortion, it it goes back to parenting. But shit happens. You know, yeah. and we 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 might have just got lucky. She, we the shit didn't happen when we were like kids, but shit happens. You know, yeah. and well, and we could say that now because we're grown. But you know, we can't judge people on the things that happen in their lives, and things happen for a reason. So, well, you know, it it happened to me when we were kids. You know, um, I was I was with someone, and I didn't have any say. I didn't I didn't get any say on it. 
And now if I if they hadn't had, had a not really thinking I can do this. You're really selfish when you're that age. Your hormones out of control. Yeah. You're trying to fuck stuff animals. Yeah. How many times do you fuck a stuff animal? A lot, man. Yeah, you're Fucking. the one who showed me how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> fuck and i was like so how do you do that <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just playing that never happened well yeah. that, i never did that he did that. yeah right <laughs> willer had a fucking mink fox he used to bone oh <laughs> uh, no <I> don't know. <laughs> a was mink it? fox <laughs> but i don't know what it was, what was it? coyote <laughs> i don't know what it was a was fucking pillow that. i don't know Did that fucking we got some shit out there about abortion, man. And, you know, I know people are going to be pissed off at me or whatever, but that's fine. Yeah. That's how I feel about it, man. That's right. You know. Uh, you got to have the dialogue. Just, you got to talk about it. If you don't talk about it, you don't come up with solutions. Well, you, funding funding's a big part of it, man. I mean, uh, you think about it, The government funds Planned Parenthood, right? Like $500 million each year. Okay. Okay. So what would they do? What would you do if they were funding the NRA? Or if they were funding um, something else you don't agree with, you know, it, it, it's political and it shouldn't be. It's a political thing and it shouldn't be funded because it also outreaches into religion. You know, neither one of us have the hardcore structure of religion in our life. Like I'm not a Catholic or you're not Islamic. You know what I mean? We don't have well, that. I grew up kind of like that. I grew up, but my dad, you know, my dad's really into the church yeah. and, and my family's really into the church. And and you know what? I am blessed. I believe in God. I'm highly blessed. Uh, in fact, I sent a message out for, uh, Saturday on my way to work. I was just feeling like the spirit of God. I felt felt good, you know. And I and I sent some stuff out to my family. And I was like, you know, I'm feeling blessed today. And thank. And, and then I sent a text to my daughter. I said, you know, this morning, why don't you pray and thank God that He's gave us a lot in our lives. You know, we appreciate all the small things. Um, but. Um, no, we'll get we'll get do a, we'll do an episode on religion, man. We'll get yeah, into that. Yeah, deep, yeah. Let's man. not get to that deep. Yeah, into it right now. We'll, we'll do so that, keeping man. Keeping this light today. Yeah. yeah, I got one I want to do on ghosts too. I've got a fucking unbelievable ghost good dude that's gonna come in. Your right your room is haunted at the Harrison's house. Yeah, dude. But fucking that that would be a good episode too. We got religion. We got ghosts. We'll do the UFO thing at some point. Oh, we have to touch dude. on the the yeah. abduction, dude. Come on. Oh no, I'm not gonna do it now. I'm not gonna do it now. We'll work into dude, it. Uh, why don't we fucking tell a fella story, dude? Why don't you, you? I know you've been wanting to set one off, so why don't you fucking? We got so many fucking fella okay, stories. Let's, so we'll... let's cut this bitch right here. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Um, okay, there is this one, and, and the story might vary from who you you hear it from. Different perspectives, right? And plus, it's twenty plus years ago, thirty years ago, you know that it happened. So. Frazier's cousin gets out of prison, right? And I don't know how we picked him up. I don't know. And you might have a better detail. We, we picked him up, right? Yeah. So, and, and to give you some sort of, uh, okay, Frazier's room was not connected to the house. It was connected to a shop. So yeah, on a big we, shop. we partied in that room because it wasn't even connected to the house. So even when Frazier was there, we used the room. The pleasure dome. Yeah, we used it to do homework and read and stuff like that. That's <laughs> stuff we used it for. That's all we did. <laughs> So, okay, so we get Frazier's cousin, right? He's fresh out of prison, man. And this guy, you know, he's hungry. And he's not hungry for food. He's hungry for something else. So <laughs> we pick him up. We get him. I don't even know where we get him at. But, okay, we take him back. We're going back to Frazier's room. And we know Nichols is there. His uh, <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> No, see, you just gonna cut it off there, dude. You got a story. <laughs> oh, right, we go, Mr. Hyde. Never mind. That was a different story. We'll go, Mr. Hyde. Tell the Mr. Hyde story. There you go, dude. Oh, uh, Mr. Hyde was. We know Mr. Hyde was there. <laughs> so we we get there. You can put it up there, dude. <laughs> I told you. We so Mr. Hyde's there. Open the door to the room. The lights are off. Pitch black. Turn on the light. Frazier's cousin's the first one to go in. <laughs> What's laying on the bed, completely naked, face down, reading a hot mag hot rod magazine with a twig, a branch from a tree, little stick, yeah, sticking out of his ass, right? Why I have no but idea. Naked. But naked, laying butt naked on but the naked. bed. 
And Frazier's cousin, I see him like in a cartoon where a guy's eyes just get big, like when he's like only, the wolf's eyes. Oh, when or when he's a uh, cartoon character's really hungry, he looks at the other cartoon character like a fresh out of the oven Chicken, pie. Yeah. yeah, that's what he looked like. He looked at, at Mr. Hyde, and he's like, "Oh fuck, look at that ass!" And then the chase was on. Yeah, and he was chasing yeah. him, and I was like, <laughs> "Mr. Hyde's gonna get fucked." <laughs> and then you're like, "Okay, wait, 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 go back." Why was he completely naked with a twig sticking out of us? I don't know. We don't Dude, know. This that's guy, the stuff that happens. That's why we call him Jekyll and Hyde, because this guy, <laughs> one of the best guys you ever meet, professional, fucking handles business, takes care of everything, his friends and this and that. But <laughs> once you get around the fellas, there's a switch that's hit. It's like he took that fucking pill, and, and this now he's before, Mr. Hyde. Before Jackass, before we had anything oh, yeah. to emulate, we did this on our own without trying to copy any YouTube videos, without no Jackass. We did all this shit. It was uh, before pagers. And whatever happened, how how if it affected Frazier, Frazier was mad at me. He felt like I was the, the puppet master, which I wasn't. He fucking was. This guy right here can manipulate most people. He's got a fucking really <laughs> high IQ. No. He doesn't have a high yeah, IQ. Yeah. I and don't then, even know if that's true. Like little Jimmy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, nobody's in that range, dude. Come on. That's so, fucking uh, RIP Stephen Hawking. So we're going to go out one night. We're going to go out and party one night. It's a Saturday night. And so... Frage is in the house. You have to go. Frage's bathroom is in the house. So he's going to take a shower to get ready. Like the garage. Yeah, it's connected to the garage. Yeah. So we're in the room fucking around, being stupid. And Mr. Hyde has to take a shit. So there's no bathroom in there. So what does he do? He takes a shit in the corner of the bedroom, takes a bath towel, wipes his ass, picks up the shit, throws it outside, puts the towel back in the corner. Monday morning comes. We go out and party the weekend. Monday morning comes. We're all by the lockers. We're sitting there bullshitting. I see Fraser coming through like 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 a raging bull, and we're all red and red, <laughs> <laughs> just bumping shoulders, knocking people out of the fucking way. He comes up. He's like, "Who the fuck shit in my room?" And I said, "How do you know somebody shit in your room?" Because I went to take a fucking shower. I went to dry myself off. I used a bath towel, wiped shit all over me. <laughs> we all know it's Nichols. Oh. <laughs> Okay, we know it's Mr. Hyde. And then uh, he, you just fucking roll back, dude. You can't I'm fucking. That. <laughs> so he, he doesn't even get mad at Mr. Hyde. He gets mad at me. What the fuck are you allowing this shit for? I'm like, I didn't fucking do it. Dude, you always turned it up, man. I mean, you got. You got tell us something that happened. Dude, I'll tell you one time, fucking. This guy's a badass at cars and stuff, and he built, built that truck, built some other this shit. Is Mr. Hyde? Yeah. And my car, my car was fast, but it wasn't fucking super tuned up or shut. We used to think it was, but it, it wasn't. And this guy fucking steals my car. Do you remember? He fucking stole my stole my car from the house, and he's out fucking doing donuts and shit. I, and he, you know what? They all the stories went together. I don't remember. Yeah, and my parents, he, my parents have like an acre where uh, there's nothing out there, so he's doing donuts and shit. Let one of your friends drive your car is that because we were like 15. Yeah, we didn't, I didn't have a license yet, but my mom and dad were like, you know, whatever. This way it was back in the day, too. I mean, yeah, we live on the country, you could just drive around and shit. So he comes back and he's all happy and shit. But I was super fucking pissed off, so I started yelling at this guy. <laughs> and he had those white Levi's on <laughs> his sister's and, pants, and, and he fucking pees his pants. <laughs> When I'm yelling at him and I'm like, oh, then I feel like a bad guy and shit, you know? They but were the fucking, new Farrah Fawcett pants. Yeah. They were, but how would you just do that? Like, he, he made <laughs> the this. Car? Did he piss in the car? No. When he got oh, out, oh. he is, he's like, just started. Oh, because he was scared? Yeah. And I was like. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I, I think I remember that. Yeah. I was like, what the hell, man? Like, <laughs> what do you do? You know, I went from being mad to being like, oh, fucking, I feel like a complete asshole now. This guy peed his pants, but. He didn't do it to, like, divert the situation. He did it to be funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I felt sad, dude. That shit happens. That, that was another time, uh, you know, we uh, we had this uh, at our high school. We had a senior rock. We had a rock where uh, all the seniors kicked it. There were some benches and shit around there. <laughs> and uh, the juniors came over. 
and I forget, they threw some fucking water or some stupid yeah. soda or burrito at us or whatever. So our buddy Mr. Hyde fucking says, oh, I'm going to one-up that. He goes into the bathroom, takes a fucking shit in a cup like this, goes over to the where the juniors are kicking it and fucking... Whew, you remember that one? Yeah, and 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 they called him in the office, and they said, um, "Did you defecate on school property?" And he said, "No." And they called me in there. I was yeah. in there too. They said, "They said," and I said, "I don't know. I don't know. I don't know." And and I was looking at him. I was, and he was he was genuinely on like I don't even think he was lying. He was like, "No, I did not defecate on school property. I did not." He was fighting it, and in my head, I know he did. Yeah. But I was like, he's convincing me. And come to find out, the motherfucker didn't even know what defecate meant. That's why he said he never defecated. Yeah, yeah, and then I they said, defecate. yeah, did they say, did you shit then? He goes, oh, no, I shit, but yeah. I didn't defecate. Yeah, I didn't, do that. <laughs> I didn't do the defecation shit. I took a shit. But... He took a shit, but I didn't defecate. Uh, that's funny shit. Yeah, okay. that's funny shit. And then I, I got one more, dude, that we got to tell fucking Dances with Fire story, dude. Okay. So, uh. We used to have fucking bonfires. We used to have fucking parties out at Ore Road, Forest Lake, The Circle. I think this one was out at McGirt's or maybe Rigadance's house. Yeah, Somewhere using, on the country. You're using names. Yeah, but those are situational names. You okay. know, like I could say Mike Socher. They don't, people don't know who we're talking about. You okay, know? I got you. But uh, we're all partying, underage drinking going on like any basic high school party. But our guy, uh, Mr. Hyde or Dances with Fires, whatever you want to call him. Out of out of nowhere, in complete darkness, there's no lights or shit out there, just the light of the fire. We see a naked guy coming around, and he's kind of dancing, shaking his ass and shit. And he turns around, he's got a fucking Coors Light bottle on his dick. Yep. Fucking put it right on his dick, and he's sitting around there dancing butt naked. <laughs> How he got his dick into a Coors Light bottle, I don't know. But he must have, like, <laughs> fucking shoved it in there and then got a heart on to hold it. You know what I mean? I don't know how the fuck it happened, dude, but it was one of the most unbelievable and fucking crazy funniest things I've ever seen in my life, dude. Because you think about it, dude, I mean... Some more of those stories. Okay, that was good. <laughs> fucking close out that fucking thing of the uh, fellas. We're at right here. We're at forty nine minutes, dude. Yeah. All right, so we'll close yeah. out that fellow story. What else are we gonna uh, hit on here? Um, what do you got? Fucking football, dude. Football's coming up. Football's Baseball's about to start, man. Are you big in baseball? I am. That's my favorite sport, man. You watch by it far. on TV? Yeah. Oh, yeah, by far. I don't really uh, watch well, baseball on TV. I'll tell you what. Fucking hockey. Hockey, the last couple of years, has overtaken baseball for me. Really? Was, yeah. I don't really watch hockey either. I'll tell you why. you big soccer player, right? Yeah, but I don't watch soccer. Right? Yeah, but the rules of hockey and soccer are very similar. I mean, the offsides, you know, um, the way they score goals. I mean, the game is pretty fluent, same way. But what I really love about hockey is – you got unwritten rules, right? There's things you don't do, and the penalties aren't handed out by the referees. The penalties are handed out by other players. And it used to be where you had a goon in hockey, and there still are a couple of goons that float around, and these goons just fucking beat people up. They just Enforcers, handle shit. Right? Yeah, they just handle shit, man. And you can usually tell who they are because they're fucking missing teeth right here. But that that. Hockey gets me, dude. I, I I barely watch basketball now, man, because I watch fucking hockey. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I watch basketball. I don't watch. They hockey. run congruent, and the the uh, Lakers been sucking because you don't know. I, I like all the LA teams, man. Fucking Lakers, Dodgers, the Kings. You know, fucking Raiders. They're not LA Raiders. They're about to be Las Vegas Raiders again. Yeah, I'm not not excited about that, dude. I don't I don't care because we go to it. It costs like fucking. To take me, my wife, and my two girls last year. Oh, cost, going to the game? Fucking cost like 600 bucks, dude, to go to the game. Plus dude. it's on a Sunday and yeah. you gotta get home late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh, I just like the, the, the <coughs> Oakland Raiders staying open, but oh well. Dude, I'll tell you a good one, dude. We were coming out. It was Carolina Panthers Raiders last year. My girl's first game. We sit up right by the fucking uh, the torch, the Al Davis torch, the eternal flame deal. Mm -hmm. We're looking across. Steph Curry's right there from the Warriors sitting right across from us, you know having a good time and shit. I'm like, hey, 
Game's almost over. Let's fucking leave. Raiders ended up coming back and fucking winning that game, but we thought it was over. So we go to the Bart. My wife is a veteran of the Bart system. She used to work down there and do all that kind of shit, right? Okay. But she had been having a few, and I didn't because I got the kids. I'm not going to drink and do that kind of shit when I got my kids. So I'm driving, and she's like, oh, we got to take this train to go this way. And I'm like, no, fucking, you're twisted up. You're, you're wrong, you know? And the girls are looking at me, and they're looking at their mom. And they're like, we're going to go with dad. <laughs> so my wife gets on the BART, goes this way. We get on the BART, go that way. I was fucking wrong. We ended up <laughs> taking the fucking bar all the way to the end of the line in San Francisco, then having to bring it all the way back up to Pleasanton, dude. My wife's sitting there fucking laughing her ass off at us. <laughs> but it was a good time for me and the girls. It's a memory, you know yeah. what I mean? But I, fu I fucked up. I admitted it. I mean, I was wrong. But it was a fucking good deal, dude. Hey, we, uh, you know what we all got to get into is uh, Lake Alpine. Some of our trips to Lake Alpine. Oh, I mean, those dude. were part of the best <clears throat> memories of our youth. Yeah, me, you, and Harrison. Oh yeah, I love it, dude. Yeah, I mean, I took my kids. I used, I was taking them like once every summer, but we haven't done that in a while. But uh, those are no, um, it's beautiful too, man. I mean, it really is awesome. It's really camping. Yeah, you're really away from everything. We had actually last time we went, we couldn't. There was, the camp was full, so we had to go to Mosquito Lake. Mosquito, yeah. Yeah, we went up there, and that's actually was pretty nice too. We got fish in a hey. little lake, and we we got actually some few trout. That lake's like fucking six feet deep, Mosquito Lake, and you fucking catch trout fucking. Uh, and it's right across the street dude. from the campsite. Yeah. It, it was nice. Yeah, we got to get into that one day. No, I dig it. You remember the one time we went? It was me, you, three way, Harrison. And was your, was your little brother Jay there with us? Jason was probably there. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think so. Crazy Jason. We were like 14, I think. And we're out fishing, walking the, the side of the fucking river, hills and shit. And we see these two chicks out in the fucking mm -hmm. canoe. You I'm going to say chicks. They were girls. We were young. They were a little older than us. So they were like 15, 16, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So they were older than us. And you know, when you're a boy at that age, you lie. We're like, oh, yeah, we're 15. We're 16. We're, we're lying to them. And so we get in the fucking boat with them. It's me, you, three-way, and these two girls. One was a redhead because I remember she had freckle, uh, freckle breast. Because we're in the boat. These fucking girls are like, hey, why don't we get naked? And we're like, okay. <laughs> so they start getting naked, and we're fucking dumb little kids. We don't know what the fuck to do. We see titties and shit. This is like our first time seeing girls like that, right? Fucking dive out of the boat. You dive out of the boat. Oh, Levi dives out of the boat. <laughs> I was stuck for a second, then I dove out of the boat. Around the well, middle. I think you had to dive out of the boat to save me. That's one of the I times just, I was going to drown. I was going to say, we're out, saved me from drowning multiple times. We're out in the middle of the fucking lake, and Dave can swim, but he don't swim that far. And then I'm like, oh, fuck, this motherfucker's going to drown, dude. And you did. You grabbed around my neck like this, and I fucking. I would drown today. I, I fucking paddled. And, I'm a uh, terrible swimmer. That's just fucking the way it goes. That was crazy because you think now, man, I wish I could be in that position. The things we could have done with those girls and stuff. No, but, I don't think like that. Oh, uh, I do, dude. When I go to back to magic time, I bring up those <laughs> those kind of fucking things, dude. Like, what could we done? That's Kevin Frazier. Hey, you know, another <laughs> another good time was when we were at Seiko. What was that? The fucking senior, uh, senior ditch day or something? Did you guys swim across the lake or something? We swam across Bernie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, I, I, had to, I had to save you. No, I didn't swim. Was it I, didn't, I, didn't go, I don't go beyond the buoys. I know that now. Even as an adult, I want to go beyond the buoys. I wear a life vest if I'm going swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I, uh, uh, a few, no, let's say about 10 years ago, Nichols has, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Nichols has a, has a jet ski, right? So he's like, uh, I think DG was with us maybe. And so he's like, okay, we dock the jet skis, and they're going to jump on the jet skis, and I go and park the truck in the trailer, and I'm going to go meet them around. Well, there's a cove. It comes out, and, and it, I can walk all the way around the cove. We're out Stockton? Or? No, no. This was a – I don't know what fucking lake it was. No, it was – I don't know. I, I'd be lying if I said what it was. So I'm like, okay, well, I can walk all around the cove. I can swim just a short distance, and I don't have to walk all the way around. So I'm like, yeah. fuck, I'm going to swim. So I get about halfway and I'm done. I'm a dr I'm dead. I'm dead. What? I'm I'm start screaming. I'm drowning. Somebody help me! And this is ten years ago, so I'm probably in my thirties. <laughs> These guys see me on the jet ski. I found. I mean, God always saves me all the time. There's one twig coming out. I mean, and I, I try to balance my weight on the twig, and I'm screaming for someone to help me. I'm drowning. These guys come in the jet skis and start coming around me, splashing me, fucking, you know, they let me in there for a little while. 
They had to save me. I drowned, almost drowned multiple times. Dude, I I know it. He's telling the truth. This yeah, guy right here, fucking terrible swimmer. I don't know, man. I I fucking I'm not a super athlete or anything, but when I got the choice of dying or fucking keep going, I'm gonna keep going, man. Yeah, I know. I maybe I just give up too easy. I'm just like, fuck it. I'm going down. That's why I better not go out beyond the buoys. You know, I'll tell you, I have a dog, Charlie. He's a bulldog, right? And uh, they'll tell you bulldogs can't swim. Mm. We had a pool at the house, and I'm like, fuck it. I got to see if this dog can swim. He's chasing a ball. A different time, he's chasing a ball. It goes into the pool. He jumps in to get it. Deep in, starts start swimming. And then all of a sudden, he fucking quits. He's like... He just puts his arms straight up like this, his legs straight up Start like this. Sinking? Dude, he sank to the bottom of the fucking thing. And I'm like, what the fuck what the fuck is this dog doing? You know what I mean? I'm like, holy shit, dude, I gotta save him. Fucking jump in, got my wallet, got my phone, got all that shit in my pockets, dude. Get this dog up, and I'm fucking put literally pumping on his chest and shit, spits water out, and he just like, what the fuck happened? But he literally gave up. He was swimming for a minute, and then he's like, fuck this. Hey, you know what I mean? Hey, this is, this goes to show you that the apple don't far, fall far from the tree. I'm, I'm we're at a, a friend's of ours' house. They have a pool in their backyard, right? My little boy is eight, so I think maybe he was eight at the time. So he's staying. I'm I'm sitting on the steps. Um, they're inside. We're barbecuing and stuff, and he's he's up there. And so I go, hey, stay right here. I'm gonna go inside and get something to drink. I'll be right back. So I go inside. And I get something to drink. I'm headed back out, and his wife starts talking to me. You know, and then I, I lose track of time. I was like, oh, yeah, I hadn't seen her for a while. What's going on? And I just so happened to leave the slider open, and the music was gone, so you couldn't hear nothing. The music just died down, and I heard something like gulp or help or something. So I go, fuck, wow. DJ. And I go, look, he's already underneath floating and then it's, it's, it's an older fuck. it's an older pool so the pool goes and just goes deep yeah so he's putting his feet and he goes down and he just went under the water i had fucking my phone wallet everything in me i fucking run out of the house jump in the water go down there pull him out put him on the fucking put him on the thing uh, my wife's sitting there wait for him and he starts coughing up this water i mean literally dude 15 more seconds and we would be down telling us a different story right now. Uh, that, 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 so we, we, every summer we give my son swimming lessons. I don't know. He's probably gone to three summers of swimming lessons. He can't still, he still can't swim. This boy, can, he's just like me. He can't swim. I mean, we take him to swimming lessons. He can't swim. It just, that's the way it goes. I don't know what to say. Oh, man, you know what it is? Uh, girls, my girls have friends all over all the time. Say, hey, can you swim? Because they're like 14, you know, 12, mm -hmm. 13, 14 now. So I just ask them, hey, can you swim? Yeah, I can swim. I can swim. So we're out there. I'm like, you girls hungry? Yeah. So I'm cooking up some hot dogs, cut up some fresh fruit and shit. To get the, there's probably, I don't know, five or six of them out there. I'm listening to music playing. I look over. I only see four. Ooh. Like, what the fuck? Look again. Down bottom of the pool. Oh, fucking fuck. little girl. Heart, yeah. Heart again, nice. here I go. Jump in, dude. Get her. Pull her up. She was coherent. She didn't spit the water out, nothing like that. She was coherent, but she was standing there like she's trying to swim. And I, and I pull her up and I say, hey, what, what's going on here? And she goes, well, I could swim in the shallow end, but I can't swim over <laughs> I here. I can swim deep. when I can touch the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> like, that don't mean you can swim. So fucking that one learned me real good, dude. Like I make sure I have them fucking swim back and forth, back and forth. And if they can't do that, I make them put on the fucking. Oh, dude, chest. I get the chills when I tell that story about my little boy. Like oh, I, dude, I still. Death. I need to fucking make up for that time. Man. Oh, yeah. Because it keeps going ahead. It's to this day, I'm still thinking, man, fucking 10, 15 more seconds. You know? And it just, God just gave me this thing like, hey, it's a wake up call, man. Spend time. Hug. I don't care how old they are. Give them a fucking hug. Tell them you love them. Tell them you're proud of them. Tell them you love you them. Know? You know, don't be afraid to show affection to your kids. You know, I don't rub my kids' nuts. Even my girls, I say I don't rub their nuts. But you know, when they do good shit, you I let rub them rub their nuts. Like I'm like, oh, you did great. Oh, that's awesome. You're doing really oh, good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. No, no, no. most of the time I put them. I'll put them down or give them a, something to fucking 
break them down, build them up. You know what I mean? I'm not just going to come out and say, they draw something and they say, oh, look at this, dad. And I'm like, yeah, that looks like shit. You could do better. Yeah, exactly. That's how That's how you ask my kids. <laughs> yeah. My daughter does bad and said, you did shitty. You did terrible. You look terrible. You didn't even try. You know, I mean, there's, you don't know how many times both my kids have fucking been in tears. Yeah. But but they know when I tell them they did good. Like when I tell them, I said, you know what? You did good. You did real good. They know that they really did good. Yeah, they appreciate now, it. Their mom's going to tell them. I mean, they she thinks they're the best people in the world. I mean, yeah. no matter what they do, they they did it the great, the greatest. But they, you know, they'll always go to her and they know that she's going to say that you did good no matter what. But if it comes from me and I said you did good, they really know they yeah, did good. Yeah, it's called rubbing. I call it rubbing nuts. And I'm not going to rub your nuts, you know, but. Yeah, don't rub my nuts. Like my daughter recently got a brand new car. Uh, I'm really proud of her. She's fucking, you know, put in the work, put in the time, put in the effort. And she bought it. She bought a new car and. I'm really, really proud of her for that, you know, like taking that responsibility on. Because when you get your first car payment, you're not ready for that shit either, man. You're not. You think about it. Oh, I put fucking two grand down. I got fucking three fifty a month payments. This and that. Well, you're not ready for it every fucking month when that three fifty comes around again next month, and then you're like, fuck, I made that one, but I'm scraping by by my teeth. Fucking here it comes the next month. Live within your means. Yeah, Buy man, a car fuck. that you can afford. But. Oh. I've been in a, I've been in car debt ever since I've been fucking an adult, man. I think I've not had a car payment for maybe like five months. That was it. Really? Fuck yeah, dude. Then I get the itch and I'm like, oh, dude at work got a new car. Oh, this guy got a new car. I gotta go. It doesn't affect me. I've been driving the same truck to work for ten plus years. I haven't had a car payment. My truck has like. 560,000 miles on it, dude. dude <laughs> fucking I, leaks a quart of oil a week. Well, I had that one Escalade. I had that bitch for like nine years. I put 280,000 miles on that. But what would happen was when I would pay it off, they'd be like, do you want an uh, interest loan on your vehicle or this and that? I'd be like, fuck yeah, give me five grand. Because to me, I get the five grand in my hand and I'm only paying fucking 120 a month or whatever, you know? I fucck did that too many times, dude. And financed our vacations or the little shit we were doing through fucking equity on my vehicle. Now I'm getting to the point. I'm like a year away from being clean, clear on the cars, and I'm good. I'm good, man. I don't want a fucking car payment anymore, I man. Do. Fuck I that. Do. But it is what it is, man. I think we were fucking over an hour now or something, man. Yeah. Yeah, we kept this episode a little light, huh? I know. We're gonna do some deep shit next time. We we got some big shit coming up. The religion's gonna be a big one, man. Yeah. Yeah. We I think ghosts. Kind of infuse it with uh, humor. Yeah. Huh? Ghosts. Or aliens. Aliens, too, yeah. yeah. I don't want to get too deep with aliens, yeah. man. Uh, and then uh, what What else is there, man? Like, we'll sh- keep coming up with topics. Everyday topics. The weekly, what's going on weekly, politics. But, you know, I want to say to get in the habit of saying something, man, and just so people remember it. That's fucking, you are at, in, in your life, you're at where you are because of the decisions you made. You know, you can and put it on other people and say, oh, this guy held me back, or I couldn't have done this or that. But basically every decision you've made puts you where you're at today, man. And and I honestly believe that because if I wanted to climb the ladder, I'd be climbing the ladder, but I've been stuck where I'm at, and I'm happy. With I wouldn't it. call it stuck. I wouldn't say stuck. I think you're, just can, you're happy, content where you're at. I'm content. There's a better word. I'm being content where I'm at, man. There's nothing wrong with trying to, to better yourself, but there's nothing wrong with being happy with where you're at. Like, I'm in a good space right now. I'm happy where I'm at. I don't need a brand new car. I don't need a brand new house. I don't need all that stuff. Like, I enjoy. I went to my son's opening day baseball game yesterday, and my daughter played, so I got to watch her on TV. Um I, those are the stuff that, that I get excited about. Not, not, you know what, you know what makes me happy too? I, I, we can talk about this later too, but you know, I get more excited when I can buy something for my kids than I buy for something for myself. I don't even give a shit. I, my, my work clothes or my dress clothes. I don't fucking care. But when I can buy my wife something nice or my kids something nice, that's better than buying myself anything. Yeah. There, there's an issue with that, man. My, uh, my pops told me, girls go through it when they hit 30 right but dudes go through it when we hit 50 like when you hit 50 and the kids are are taking care of themselves and all that kind of stuff then it's finally like the time when we can say you know what fuck it i want to go buy a harley or i want to buy a vet or do whatever that midnight crisis shit right yeah that's what cliff told me that's when it was going to hit us when we hit 50 true but what we're doing right now 
it's something I get excited to do. I no, think, I, I think I we're too, getting man. older. We're getting, we're getting, we're in our four, we're 43. So this stuff is what I'm excited to do. Me and you doing this, this is what I get excited to do for myself. Yeah. This is the one thing for myself that I do besides go to work every fucking day. Yeah. Yeah. This is fun. I do too. And we're going to continually get better. We're going to, we're, we're fucking new to this shit. We still, it took us like an hour to figure out how to sync the fucking <laughs> camera with the audio and shit today. Yeah, hopefully it comes out okay. I don't know, and I keep, you know. We got no IT guy. No. <laughs> we got no IT guy. This was our fucking computer right here when we grew up. This is like Speak the. Speak and spell? Yeah. Well, I remember you used to have the fucking Commodore 64. Remember that shit? Yeah. We I played basketball shit. on there. Yeah, I thought that shit was actually like a real computer. This, this, these phones are insane. Oh, yeah, we, we didn't, yeah. we didn't have nothing like that. No, either. this, this was our video, video games right here, like this shit. The 90s. Fuck, dude. Listen. 80s listen. and 90s. Does this say? You hear that? <laughs> it still works, dude. But will we wrap this bitch up? Huh? Yeah. Cut yeah. it up, edit it. It's uh March 18th. Sunday. We're looking for the next one next Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, so next week maybe we'll get into some deep issues. Yeah, we just want to keep it light and fucking talk some shit this week. I really want to get that driving shit off my chest, dude, because I'm fucking sick of people driving stupid. Oh, fuck. That's never going to end. You can you fucking have a heart attack.